You know, we were never in summers for any extended period of time. It was always a vaulting pole onto Toto or onto Scaraba or a stepping stone, if you will. And so I never spent a night at the hotel. But if I had, it would have cleaned out my bank account, so that's fine. But still, because I never did that, I missed out on this Photoman location. So let's take a picture next to this very tiny car that Ness's head wouldn't even fit into the door uh, into. That's really crazy. After spending a night at the hotel, I can only assume that the first place I would want to go is to breakfast, preferably a breakfast with a beautiful oceanside view. And that's indeed what I'm going to do. And Photo Man will drop down from the ceiling like a bat, like a vampire, land on this poor woman's table, onto her bacon and eggs and hash browns and take a picture of us, and then leave with ketchup covered shoes. Oh boy, oh, criminal caterpillar. Really? Okay, I need that guy. I didn't even know they spawned here. Okay, criminal caterpillar. You're mine. Look at that. That's perfect. Green swirl away. Ah, oh, that, that worked out very well. Perfect. Okay. So, further expa expanding on the story of my supposed storiness, uh, I will assume that... Ness, Paula, Jeff, and Pooh, after all this is over, this is a sneak peek of what is to come, and they, they went around traveling the world, except in leisure, and they stopped in at summer, spent a night at the hotel, had a beautiful breakfast, and then just like tourists, they got lost in uh, Scra the Scraban Desert. I can only assume that's what happened, and they went to this oasis for a waterhole, and this guy took a picture of them. There's my story for the beginning of this episode. And I'm avoiding enemies like a boss with Teleport Alpha. In fact, I'm going to do it again. Oh, it's also worth noting that when we were here with Dungeon Man, I was mere feet away. Yes, feet away from getting the, the photo taken. And it would have actually included uh, Dungeon Man. I'll be home for Christmas, except it's not that time. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Earthbound. Last time, we got the Sword of Kings in the Stonehenge base. Uh, after 7 minutes, or 6 minutes, 7 seconds, and 15 battles fought, which is the fastest time I've ever seen anyone get for the Sword of Kings. This episode, I'm going to get a Red Swirl. Or not. I really want a red swirl. I actually need a red swirl right now because there's an item that I've held on to for far too long. Why have I held on to this item? I really want this to... There it is. Okay, good. I actually should have gotten an insta-kill there, but that's fine. The monkey's love. I have held on to this for how many episodes now? I've never used it. I've never even said what it does. So let's do that now. Um, defend and defend so I can actually use the item. Packed up your eyes, and monkey's love. All of a sudden, a monkey came along, pinned the enemy down with its tiny monkey body, and solidified the, the crow. That's all the item does. Literally, all it does. Now, it could be... It actually is not not useless, but still, I've held on to it, to, I've held on to it for that long, and it's kind of ridiculous. So, in case you didn't tune in last time, you may be wondering why I'm back at Onet of all places. I mean, I am these levels and I'm back at my hometown. Well, it's because we need the book Overcoming Shyness from the Onet Library, because we can give it to the Tenta Tribe, have them overcome their shyness, and then we can go down in a hole. That's, that's the most solid reasoning for doing anything. So, let's go in here and uh, talk to some people, see if we can get a, a drop on where it is. Oh, hi Ness. It's another nice day. What? You'd like the book Overcoming Shyness? I've read it, it's a great book. So you want to overcome shyness also? You should be able to find it on the bookcase. So let's go in here, and because I am a veteran Earthbound player, I will find the book here. Or third time's the charm, there it is, I found it. Okay, good. I'm truly a veteran player, and I got the shyness book. Let's see, what is, oh, I have a cookie. Uh, drop the cookie. Um, now, in off-screen, I did do a couple things. I think I changed up Ness's inventory slightly, but Paula is the drastic change. I gave her the Pixies bracelet, which gives her some defense, some luck, and I believe an immunity to hypnosis, and the Saturn ri ribbon, which gives some defense and more luck. So that's pretty cool. Her defense is now actually kind of sky high. Uh, she still has the broken eraser, but meh. Uh, but the biggest thing is that Jeff fixed the defense shower, which he only needed 45 IQ to do. Uh, 45 or 40. I think it's actually 40. And this is an infinite use defense spray, except it's used on the entire party, which is a good item. That's that's pretty good. Um, 
Many people don't use Jeff's other items just because his bottle rockets are so good, but this is a legitimately good item. Uh, other things don't exist. I have not made any other changes, so let's go. Now, also, last episode, I mentioned something I could do with our money in on net. And in the spirit of getting all of the Photo Man locations, there's one I missed in the first couple of episodes. Well, more importantly, I didn't miss it. It's just, one, I didn't have the money to get it. And two, I kind of wanted to give us some semblance of progress. So I didn't do it. Down at the southwestern point of town, west, because that's the direction west, left, uh, there is a path, which I haven't traversed. And actually, I did not know this existed until this let's play. I did not know that Onet was a coastal town, but it is. So we can talk to this trumpet player and get some cool stuff. I must be the happiest man in the world. I can practice my trumpet in this scenic spot. I'll send my haunting melody throughout the town. So we have a nice trumpet player and a beautiful view of the ocean, but we have this man who we have come to know and love as Wally. This is Wally. Doesn't this house look good? You can buy it for only $7,500. It has an ocean view and the sunsets, I'll, I'll bet, are beautiful. Folks should have a place of their own. Do you want to buy it? Yes. Thank you. It's all yours now. Take some time and relax. Even if you're poor, come and see how easy it is to own a luxurious second home. Bleak Point, or Beak Point? Beak Point? Bleak Point? What is that? Beak Point. Real estate. So now, Ness has a place to call his own. After this entire adventure is over, he has a fixer-upper that he can devote some time into. Uh, and this place is actually kind of special because it has a beautiful oceanside view of with a knocked out wall. I can only assume that Franklin Schnobbs is the person who built this house. But also, right next to the couch is another Photo Man location. If we sit down to watch the non-existent television, he will jump down from the ceiling like a bat, take our picture, and then leave. Awesome. Fuzzy Pickles, indeed. And that's the fourth fourth location this this episode, which is pretty sweet. I think that's a record. But also, in this dresser is an item. Yes, I want to read it. My Secret Life, oh boy. Chapter 3, story from the previous chapter. I was neither a murder suspect nor a target of an international spy organization, but I drove a car down the Jersey Turnpike at 80 miles an hour. A police officer pulled me over and asked for my driver's license. He said I was going 20 miles per hour over the speed limit. I instantly pointed to my wife and said, I'm in a hurry, my wife is in labor. Fortunately, my wife actually had a big stomach. I hoped he'd let me go with this excuse. Oh, since it's an emergency, I'll lead you to hospital with my police car, he said. No, it's not necessary. Why not, he asked. Uh, well, let's get going, said the officer. No, no, we can't. This baby is a demon child. Now tune in next week for the adventures of the Demon Family Robinson with Demon Dad, Demon Mom, Demon Baby, and the Demon Mobile on the Demon Jersey Turnpike. So that's interesting. It's something that I've never done before. Like I said, discovering new things about Earthbound. So now that that is over, let's use Teleport Beta for the first time and go to Tenda Village. Now that we have the Book of Overcoming Shyness, we can spinning in circles and go there. Here it is, Tenda Village. It has not changed since we were last here an uh, uh, episode or two ago. So if we just go right up to the leader, we can use the Shyness Book and cure his disease. <laughs> book! Can fix shyness. Thanks. Relax. I'll read to everyone. Oh, just holding this book in my hands makes me feel like I'm overcoming my shyness already. I'll, I'll really take time to read it to everyone. The leader of the Tenda tribe read overcoming shyness to everyone. Chit chat. What a whisper. I'd like to give you some Tenda kraut in return. Tenda kraut is a type of dish that all Tenda like. It stinks but tastes wonderful. Ness lent the leader of the Tenda tribe the book Overcoming Shyness, and in return, we got the Tenda Kraut, which is an item that I cannot use, but I, someone else can. But also, this is yet another Photo Man picture. And this one's special, because this is the last Photo Man location before the end of the game. So it gives us a good read on how far we've come and how much further we have to go in this grand adventure. This is the last picture. Is that crazy or what? always bring back the fondest of memories. This Let's Play will too. Hey you, I have a happy little question for you. A paladin, paladin. Are you sure this is the correct player's name? If it's not right, you can change it. No, I'm pretty sure that that is fine. Paladin. Are you sure it's what you want? Are you happy with the name? Well, I could use uh, a, another name, but 
I, I don't use my that name for a reason, because it would be referenced with a certain platypi on television. I thought you'd made up your mind. Awesome. So, that's it. We now have, we can... What? Really? Okay. I I will not argue with that. That's I'm not near your woman. But that's all that I want to do in the Tenda Tribe place. Now we can leave here. Sorry about the cut there. I just had to talk to this guy for reasons of the end slate. Do you remember the uh, cup of coffee text that we saw in Saturn Valley? Well, if we talk to this guy, we'll get something similar to that. That will recap our adventure and give some insight into the story. But, like I said, it will be shown in the end slate. I just had to record it real quick. Uh, there's a shop up here, which I actually lied. There, I do want to talk to the shop guy before we leave. But, this shop is interesting. I actually kind of skipped past it. I like the Horn of Life. Give me the Horn of Life. The Horn of Life is love. The Horn of Life is life. I'll hail the Horn of Life. Now, this shop is unique, like I said. Because the payment for this is horns are horn, horns of life. And if we give him one, we will work down the list. If we give him one, we'll get the plain roll, then the yogurt, then the plain roll, spicy jerky, bag of drag night, talisman coin, hall of vein bat, etc. Now, this we cannot choose what I get in the shop. So technically, the Hall of Fame bat costs seven horns of life, which is eleven thousand dollars. In my opinion, the only two items here that are worth it. It are the Bag of Dragonite and the Hall of Fame Bat. Because the Talisman Coin is outdated at this point. Spicy Jerky, bleh, we have two healers in the group now. So the Hall of Fame Bat is the only one worth it. But it's also not worth it at all because it only gives like 10 to 15 defense over the bat I have equipped right now, which is the Big League Bat. And also, I'm going for one, one, uh, the 1 in 128 ultimate items, where each member of the party has an item that is their ultimate item, that you can only get from a 1 in 128 drop. And I want to get all of them this Let's Play, so why would I want to get a weapon that I'm going to get a better version of in like, an episode or two? I'm not! So let's talk to this guy. Recently, everyone is able to talk a lot, so I've lost my identity. I actually had a feeling that would happen. Powerful I, so show everyone! Kamehameha! Hup, I got it! Yeehaw! And I can only presume that rock was thrown into orbit because this guy's so strong. My power. Ah, oh, inspiring. I can totally just picture that little guy just like powering up like in Dragon Ball Z, but he has the cutest voice ever like, Hey! It'd be so adorable. Good evening. <laughs> I'm sorry if I made you throw up with that sound. <laughs> I'm a talking rock, but the rocks around here don't like to talk too much. The rocks that talk the most, the rock that talks the, talks the most is deep down in the labyrinth of ways ahead. In the lost underworld. Don't forget to talk to the rock, it's important. So we'll talk to all the Blarney Stones. So this is an area that we have not seen in a while. This is a dungeon housing or a Your Sanctuary location, which is special because we haven't seen one, like I said, in forever. And this area is kind of cool because there are a lot of ladders. There are, there are multiple levels that we will be progressing on. But also, the enemies on the lower level are pretty brutal. The Conducting Spirit knows PSI Thunder Gamma, which will hit three times for about 500 damage, e or not each time, but total. And also the Uncontrollable Sphere, which knows PSI Fire Beta, which will almost insta-kill everyone but Jeff since he has the Fire Pendant equipped. Uh, so that's kind of bad. My biggest suggestion, first of all, is to kill him last, but also, uh, if you if you want to see if you can run, go ahead and use Jeff's Spy on the Uncontrollable Sphere, as he will be able to detect any, um, any special drops that he has. So if he has the drop that you want, oh by the way, he houses the 1 in 120 item that I want to get this episode, so yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Try PSI Fire Alpha, oh boy. 84, 89, wait what? Oh, did I not have Jeff equip that? Oh, I thought I did, okay. Uh, has stuff, has stuff, he does not have the item, so now I can run. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, let's run. Let's please run, please run, please run, please. No, 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 no. Oh boy. Okay, good. Oh snap, this is gonna kill a lot of people. Oh, oh boy. I'm gonna die right off, aren't I? Oh, snakes. Okay, defend. No, 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 no. I'm gonna die right off. That is so stupid. Okay, let's let's at least get rid of him. 
Um, Paul's going to die. I know that. So let's have her defend. Jeff, you use... Ah, oh, this is bad. This is so bad. Oh, you know what? No, 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 no. You use this. I need to get rid of this. I really need to get rid of this. Uh, get rid of these enemies. A lot of damage to him. Okay, good. <sighs> yeah, you see why I didn't want to fight these enemies? They're bad. Also, Ness. Don't, don't do that. Ah. Uh, this is really bad. Uh, Jeff, use your other multi-bottle rocket on him. Th that'll kill him. It'll kill Jeff, actually, but still. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay, so it's fine. But you can see how brutal those enemies are, right? They are absolutely detrimental. And we're not going to get the, the drop either, so that's a problem. It's really a big problem. These enemies are stupid difficult. And I don't want to fight them, but I'm going to have to. Alright, so what I'm going to do, the order, of biz the order of operations here is to defeat the Your Sanctuary Location boss, and then go back and fight the Uncontrollable Sphere since we can get, get a Green Swirl. And if we get a Green Swirl, they will not self-destruct and kill the entire party, and they don't have a chance to use their detrimental attacks. This is the, what I'm I want to do. The Underground Talking Rock seems to want to talk a lot more than I do. That's cool, that was actually Ness monologuing. That's interesting. That is one of the few times that Ness talks, actually. That's cool. Okay, but also, there is a certain enemy in here that I want to fight. On the upper level, the uncontrollable spheres don't spawn as often. Instead, they are replaced with this little red enemy that looks a lot similar to Foppies. However, unlike Foppies, these are actually Fobbies. Alright, down here, now that no enemies have spawned, are some more enemies. Great. I want to avoid all the enemies on the lower level because they can destroy my entire party. So let's see if I can avoid this. Ah, get away! Get away! Oh my goodness. So yeah, these enemies are hard. Usually I encounter the Fobbies first, but I didn't. But in here is an IQ capsule, which I will promptly give to Jeff. Good. But there's an item in here that is also very good. Housed in here is one another one of Jeff's equipable items. It is the Diadem of Kings, which gives a lot of good stats. But here are the Fobbies, which I can actually show off because I should show them off. They are easy enemies. They are not orange, or I mean, they're, they're not red like the Fobbies are. These are orange, or rather they are orange. So if we kill all these, then we'll get a ton of experience. In fact, this is the single best place in the entire game to farm. Not even joking. Because at this point, Paula knows PSI Fire Gamma, which can almost insta-kill an entire group of Fobbies. But she also knows, uh, knows Magnet Omega, which will suck a lot of PP out of the Fobbies. So what you can do is alternate between uh, Poo using... Magnet Omega to heal up his PP, and then Polly using Fire uh, Fire Gamma to do the stuff, and then doing it vice versa, having Polly use uh, Magnet, and then having Pooh use the the Star Storm. So that's pretty cool. It's a really good way to farm, and it is the best way in the entire game to farm. So, right here we have the Diadem of Kings, which equips to Other. It gives plus 20 defense, which is welcome, uh, but it also gives... 30 luck and protects against freeze, fire, paralysis, and flash. So you can see how useful this item will be, especially in this area. So I'm going to equip it and give uh, give Pooh some more stats, and that means there's only one more equipable item that he needs in the entire game. Ah, uh, I'm actually just going to cut around with the enemies pretty much because there's so many enemies in this area that it is kind of ridiculous to progress without having cut every battle out. But the best place in this cave to farm is right here because Fobbies will spawn like nobody's business. I mean, there's only one right now, but they'll spawn in, in swarms that you can just kill off all of them. Get a, a couple like 20,000, 30,000 experience and then just move on. I think it actually gives more experience than that because each Fobby gives 4,587 about. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. Okay, let's go up here. Uh, like I said, going to do the Your Sanctuary location with the boss, then speed up me farming to get the items. So here are a bunch of Fobbies, and this is a good example. There are only four here, but this is enough to give me a gigantic level up. In fact, I don't even need to use Psychic Attacks. I can just use Bashes, and it, it'll work the same way. They, they all die, and it's just really nice. Heavy Bazooka will do a lot of damage, and 
now they can try their stuff, which never works. The only attack that they have that's actually potent is their bash attack, which deals 40 damage, which is nothing. So the upper level, it houses the friendly enemies that uh, you can just insta-kill and get experience, and the lower level houses enemies that will wipe the floor with your party, which is kind of interesting. It's a unique idea for a dungeon, um, and getting through it is kind of... It's kind of feast and famine, um, because you're always going to go have to go to the lower level and the upper. Okay, luck. Let's give that to Paula. Uh, typically, pills you don't want to use on Ness anymore, because he's going to, he is just so far ahead of the party, you just don't want to use them. So, one question I'm surprised no one asked in the comments was, where are the random pals play? Because... Uh, in Okami and Skyward Sword, what I would do is about every 10, 20 episodes, I would have uh, some friends over. Thanks for talking to me. You're welcome. I would have some friends over and uh, like Ryan, Nova, or Dave, and we would play We would play through uh, the episode as a group, which was pretty fun. Um, but I stopped doing it for this Let's Play, mainly because Nova is not a big fan of RPGs, but also because this Let's Play is short. But there's the main reason in that I'm trying to uh, separate pals play and the normal pal plays into two separate things so that there are four full let's plays and then full or full pal plays and full pals play which is pretty cool I'm, i want to start doing that um i did i started it with five nights at freddy's and i want to continue it soon oh my goodness ah uh, that's so annoying flash wait oh ness doesn't have the night pendant equipped oh that's why so flash just straight up killed him so that's happy, my goodness. It's a good thing that I know PSI Healing Omega, which I just got. It will he it will uh, revive party members and bring them back at full health, which is pretty cool. And then I can just immediately turn around and give Pooh a bottle of DX water to heal him up of that PPO, and then avoid enemies. But that's some one thing I was surprised that the comments didn't ask. So I've cut out these battles because they're insane. If you look at how many enemies here, it is crazy how many I'm fighting. Also, I didn't show off Monkey's Love. What? I thought it. Oh, it's an infinite use? Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, but I, I am in trouble. And I'm going to use one of my many cups of life noodles on Ness because flash attacks are just straight up killing him. It's really dumb. Okay, let's see if I can avoid these enemies. Open the present. There's a rock candy inside. Don't really care. I just want to get past these enemies. Ah. Okay, just scoot up here and fight this. This is a spinning robo and also one of the lightning guys. I'm taking some heavy fire. In fact, I've just cut out a bunch of battles because like I can't progress and say anything I want to say without cutting out so many battles. And these enemies are hard. The lower enemies are the hardest like we faced thus far. They're almost all bosses which is crazy, but if you just keep bashing them and make sure that they don't see the light of day to use their psychic attacks, it's not that bad, but still, the, uh, these uncontrollable spheres, you can never, you never want to face them unless you know you're going to get a green swirl. It is horrible. Ah. But one good thing is that, uh, Pooh and, and Jeff are a little bit more immune to, I, uh, to uh, things now. Okay, bottle of DX water, good. Let's use that on Pooh. Okay, another thing that I've never addressed, now that I can actually talk, is, uh, one thing I noticed a couple episodes ago, someone, oh, whoa, dream come true, someone, uh, used language in the comments, and I've never talked about that, and I'm surprised that I never thought about that possibility, I, I really didn't, I never thought about anyone using language in the comments, mainly because this is a clean channel, so I never expected it, but someone used it, and it took me aback, because, uh, like I said, never talked about it, uh, but I like to talk about it here. I don't mind if you use language in the comments. I don't. I will say that right now. Uh, I'm not going to try and control my commenters by saying what they can and can't say. But also, I, I just want to ask that if you were to co uh, comment, try to keep it PG, at least. Um, like I said, I've never even thought about this. But try to keep it PG for the people that are younger in the audience. Because I do have younger people in the audience. And I don't. I want to make sure that they, that they don't... Uh, see something that they probably shouldn't yet in their life. So, try to keep it, it, it PG uh, and clean. But otherwise, I'm not going to rem I, I am only going to remove a comment. I've, I've done- I've only had to do that a couple times now, but uh, I'll only remove a comment if it says something like 
straight up R-rated or something like that, um, or it's insulting someone or something like that, I will remove that because I do want to make sure that the that my comment se section is a safe place. And for the most part, well, 99% of the time, you guys have made sure that that is true. But also, just I, I just wanted to throw that out. Also, I got Omega, which can be used four times. Okay, let's fight you. Get a green swirl. So if he chooses to join the fight, I can get a green. Also, one thing you'll probably notice that I have done this episode is that, ooh, that's actually pretty good, is I've skipped a lot of the level ups. I've gotten a ton this episode, but I've skipped half of them because I'm getting so many that it would just interrupt the flow even more, and the enemy's already er uh, interrupted enough. This is the Earth's belly button. So it's an Audi? That's kind of gross. It's, I don't even get why people think that's gross. It's luxury jerky. What is that? Okay, I'm going to stop talking about what I was talking about uh, and also move this up to the top of my inventory. But, what is the luxury jerky? Help. A gourmet version of jerky that's considered delicacy is created by skill for hours of Scooby-Doo. And what does it do? What does it do? 300 HP, okay, that's not bad. I'll use that sometime. Okay, there's some enemies. Let's fight them and cut it out again. <sighs> this is actually, I, I did not remember how annoying this area is until just now. It really is a pain in the neck. Oof. So, so much experience. This is really good. Okay, let me go ahead and look on my map here. Oh, right here. This is the Your Sanctuary location boss, and apparently this enemy wants to fight me before I get there. Okay, so we're finally here, and remember, the episode isn't over after this. I still need to do the farming, which I'll probably cut out. You finally got here. This is the seventh Your Sanctuary location, but it's mine now. Take it from me if you dare. The Electro Spectre attacked. As much as this looks like a bat, it is in fact a spectre, not a bat. Uh, it starts out with a psychic shield, so if I were to have any shield killers, I would use them, but sadly I, I did not bring them with me, so physical attacks are going to be my friend here. Um, let's see, what else? Let's go ahead and do defense down because I'm going to be hitting it with physical attacks. And also, multi bot rockets, since I still have them. And Pooh, you go ahead and use a bash attack. Defense down alpha. Should lower its defense a great deal. Did not work. Okay, that works. That's fine. Uh, the the multi bot rocket should work pretty well. multi bot rocket Also, I think it just destroyed its own shield with that. Did a lot of damage, and it should be finished off this turn. Let's just use a heavy bazooka on it and finish it off with bash attacks. Awesome. Pretty easy boss if you if you just play your cards right and don't use... Oh boy. Never mind. It was really easy. It was pretty easy. Yeah, uh, he's not he's not that threatening. Just keep hitting with him with physical attacks. Don't use psychic attacks unless you have a shield killer. If you do, it'll actually, the battle will go a lot quicker, but it's not that bad. Shield killer. Do not work on Jeff. Of course not. Why would it? He didn't have a shield, you goofball. Come on, finish him off. He's pretty close to it by now. Electrical shock attack. Ooh, boy. Okay, uh... Oh, he's tame. Okay, that was easy. That was really easy. A lot of experience. Ness's level is now 65. HP went up by 1. PP went up by 2. Uh, Jeff's level is now 59. Offense went up by 1. Speed went up by 1. Guts went up by 1. IQ went up by 1. Luck went up by 1. HP went up by 2. Pooh's level is now 56. Oh, baby. Offense went up by 5. Defense went up by 2. Oh, baby. Speed went up by 3. Vitality went up by 1. IQ went up by 1. Luck went up by 2. HP went up by 10. PP went up by 4. Now, I could go to the Your Sanctuary location, but I'm going to take this opportunity to, one, finish the area, because there's still s uh, some stuff. There is an item called the Rabbit's Foot right here, which is a new item. But it is, in fact, an equipable, which is kind of new. It gives three defense, but it's a charm, so that's fine. It gives 3 defense and 40 speed. So I'm going to be equipping this over the crystal charm, because the crystal charm only gives gives 15, so that now the main healer of the group can go first more uh, more often than not. Pretty good item. And now I can just drop the crystal charm, because I don't need it anymore. No, 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 no. Drop. Got rid of the crystal charm, and now uh, let's move this up to the top, and we're good. Awesome. Now, 
I have farmed up a lot this episode. I'm level 65, uh, a ton of levels higher than I was before. And now it's even better because the enemies are running away from me. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of this maze, and then I'm going to go back through it and get the uh, 1 in 128 item. Once again, not sure how far we are up on time. I'm pretty sure we're very high, but I want to get to it. I will cut to it, and I'll meet you then. There it is! There it is! That was really easy. Also, just like uh, the Sword of Kings, I spent like six minutes. Awesome! I now have the Broken Antenna, which will turn into the Gaia Beam, which, let's see, what exactly does the Gaia Beam do? The Gaia Beam... Once Jeff has 65 IQ, he will fix the broken antenna and it will become the Gaia Beam, his ultimate weapon which will give him 125 defense. Now, as much as you're probably, well, veteran Earthbound players are probably like, wow, did you get these so quickly? Let me just, uh, let me just clarify something. On Twitter, I posted that I was having trouble with 1 in 128 items, and that's true, because I had a trouble with this episode. I've recorded this episode maybe three or four times thus far, and each time, I had a killer, absolutely killer time getting the 1 in 128 items. Uh, specifically, this one. Well, actually, no, just this one, actually. Uh, I kept failing it, because I was, I was getting... I, it took maybe maybe two hours um, last take of this episode, and I still didn't get the beam. And I was becoming really overpowered. I hadn't defeated the Your Sanctuary location boss yet, so I was not getting green swirls. And it was an absolute nightmare. But now I have that, so I'm doing the things. Alright, back at where we defeated the location boss, I can finish this out episode out in style by visiting the fan favorite Your Sanctuary location. This is arguably one of the coolest things I've seen in video games. Also, I know this is probably a long episode, but I'm fine with it. And another thing, when I was going through this area, I realized this this cave reminds me a lot of Pikmin. There's There are a couple caves in Pikmin that look almost identical, and it's pretty cool. But this... Oh man, this is Lumen Hall itself. It's gorgeous. And it's something I've never before seen in a video game. And to get what I'm saying... You'll have to look at this. Right here. I'm Ness. It's been a long road getting here. Soon, I'll be... Soon, I'll be... Soon, I'll be... What will happen to us? What? Well, what's happening? My thoughts are being written out on the wall. Or are they?
Ness saw a vision of his father holding him. Ness's soundstone recorded the melody of Lumen Hall. We've come so far. We really have, guys. I mean, we've we've actually come full circle, if you think about it. This At the beginning of this episode, we were in Onet. We were in Ness's house. We started off in the same place where we started off before, by sleeping. We bought a house. We are setting up for a future. Ness now has a future. And he's come so far. Look at look, 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 Looking at these stats, you can really see that this party has become powerful. But it's not, it's not the power that they've achieved together. It's the fact that they ach achieved something together. They're becoming friends. They're becoming inseparable. Each party member compliments the, me the next immensely. Paula has defense down. She accentuates Ness's attacks. Jeff has something to heal himself so that Ness can focus his healing abilities on Paula. Pooh is almost completely self-sufficient, but he can aid when Ness falls when Ness falls in battle, or Paula does. He can aid where they fall short, and together they fa they form a tight knit group that is nearly invincible. Gygus is growing fearful of this group, and because of that, he's slipping. This group is becoming powerful. They're conquering cha challenges, and soon they will conquer Gygus himself. Next time, in Pal Plays Earthbound, we will be heading down that hole, right here, right here, and seeing what adventures lie within. We've heard tale of dinosaurs deep down underground. We've heard tale of them for a long time now, since Foresight, and we're going to be seeing if they truly exist. There are more one in 128 items that I would like to grab as well. We have the ultimate weapon for Jeff, and he's almost to the point where he can fix it. Yeah, he's only 4 IQ away, which I may do some farming off screen to get him up there. Um, and we just need the ultimate weapons for Paula and Ness himself. I'm, sur I'm looking out to do all of the 1 in 128 items. And it will be interesting to see if I can complete that goal. If you like this episode of Earthbound, please put, click like. And if you haven't done so already, highly consider subscribing as I have a lot of fun with my Let's Plays and I hope you have fun alongside. I have big plans for the channel as this Let's Play closes and another and the preparations for the next Let's Play begin. I'll see you guys next time on a Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday for another Pal Plays Earthbound.